Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 57. <clears throat> uh, before we go on, uh, today we're going to be trying to link our sections together so that we can, you know, have multiple lerps going and change when they start and stop. But this transition editor bit, I want to change it so that the... Um, So that this doesn't automatically happen if if it's set to zero. Yeah, and that's kind of tricky. So we'll say Right. So let's see here. This is at zero. So one. Let's clear this out. And we'll delete. That's one. Oh. What? Zero. Enter. Ah, that makes sense. Because <clears throat> we're not actually changing this section count here. Um, this is sort of a small thing. I mean... So when we delete, <clears throat> this actually updates and puts this at zero, even though nothing is there. Hmm. You know what? Let's just do a log warning. Um, section count. being set to zero is currently disabled due to my absolute laziness. It is not a problem worth solving at the moment, right? Cool. A little bit of error checking there. Okay, so what do we got here? We're going to need to do this again. Again. Okay. Edit our section names. So this was out position. That will be a vector 3. We'll do a curve up. N times 0.5. Ah, okay, so that's a thing. Um, for our vector 3, we shouldn't have a start vector and end vector. Um, we should be exposing... Aha, here we go. So this is our public transform um, target position, we'll call it that. <clears throat> well, see, that's the thing, this vector 3. I guess we don't actually ever have to show the start, right? Because the start is whatever it's at at the beginning. Yeah, we'll just, we'll do it this way. We'll just ask for the position here. Um, so instead of start vector and end vector, we are not doing a vector 3 field. 
<clears throat> some kind of field where it's an object field. Hey, current target position. Doesn't like this, cannot convert from transform to type. What kind of fields do we have? Property field. Um, maybe this is what we want. Nope. As you can see, my <coughs> editor foo is not the best in the world. But it just takes a little bit of investigation to figure that out. I don't want any delayed fields. Hmm. Float int label long mask object. Do I just need to cast this as an object? Oh, this is deprecated even. Okay. Serialized property. I do believe that transforms are serialized, so that shouldn't be giving us any issues. Really? Property, include children, label. As serialized property? No. Handles undo and styling UI for prefabs. Hmm. Let's see what we're doing wrong here. Unity editor GUI layout object. Now let's be more specific. I want to transform. Sure. Object field. Editor window, boop doop doo. Object field type of object. True. Okay. Eh? Object. Do I need to cast it as an object? That doesn't make sense. Oh, hey. Hmm. This is a game or an object. Hmm. <laughs> How old is this? 2012. Light source, rotating light, type of light, false as light. My label, my transform, type of transform, false as transform. What is this false here? Cannot convert unity dot object to vector three. Oh my god. Ah oh. Was this working the whole time? 
Wah, wah, wah. So what's this false do? What are you doing here? Looking for a, a four argument list here. I guess we're doing false for the layout options. That shouldn't be necessary. Oh. Object field, string, object type. Check the docs for the usage of the new parameter. Allow scene objects. Hmm. The true above tells the editor that the property to allow scene objects set to false if you only want assets to be allowed. Interesting. Well, this seems to be working out okay. You know, <clears throat> I've got this type vector 3, but really I'm passing this a transform here. We might actually want a whole transform. I don't know. We'll leave it like this for now. Um, let's make a note. That might be a really good idea. Cool, no dropped frames. That's what I like to see. Do, 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 do. So, oh boy. Yeah, now we've got this transform here. And I guess the transform, we are transitioning the world to the main camera, right? And then the next thing that we're doing is out scale. And that's using this guy here. Yeah, we don't need to draw the start value. Um, I think my previous end value was 20. Let's get rid of drawing that start value. Junk. There we go. And end time for this will be 0.5. And this is our out fade, which will be a float. We'll do the S curve. And the end value will be 1. Right? So that's our glossiness that we're changing. So we're going to need, we've got our things here. And we'll have a label, this will be debug. And this will be, we've got a target. Do we have a total transition duration? And this is a float field. 
Total duration, we've got our target TTD. And this will be our tuning section. So let's see how that looks. Ooh, is there a way to make this bold? That would be so nice. We layout options. Old option. This doesn't seem right. GUI layout bold. Editor styles bold label. Not bad. That looks a lot better. Um, so our total duration is three seconds. That seems cool. So now what we need to do is we need to start looping through these. Or I guess what we... Hmm. Because essentially we're going to be building a transform ease for each of these. Huh? <clears throat> Let's see, bring up our good friend Mischief. Sure, that's fine. So essentially we have a section And that's going to determine, we need to determine the duration of the section. Um, we also need to know the start time. And I think that's enough to get us started. Um, I'm a little bit worried about how we're going to do the update delegate, right? That might be a little bit tricky. So we have all of our fade materials. Although I guess... We'll have a transition timer. Uh, these are both public, so they don't need to be in private, and they also don't need to be serialized. I believe this transition timer will be internal, so we're not going to do anything with that. We're going to need our transform eases, and this is where things start to get a little bit wonky, I think. Let's get weird with it. Let's use a dictionary. We'll have a string as a key and a uh, transform ease as a value. And then this will be our section dictionary. The reason I'm using a string as a key here is so that we can... Um, you know, use these names, right? This out underscore position, we'll have an in underscore position as well. So we've got this and when we awake, we're going to fill out 
Or I guess we could make this its own function. Let's call this initialize section dictionary. So this is going to loop through all of our sections. Got our current one. <clears throat> And so we're first going to need to calculate the, I guess I'll call this delta ratio. Current dot end time minus current dot start time. Time is not the right word for that. Ah, I knew I was going to regret that. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think ratio is the right word for that either. A mathematical term used to define a number between 0 and 1. Maybe a scalar? But end scalar, start scalar doesn't make sense. You know what I could do? Hey, I like that idea. Um, where are you here? So in our editor, when we're doing our start time and end time, let's change this. E-G-Y-L dot, uh, what would you call a slider? And the value is start time from 0 to 1. Label. Oops, I goofed on that one for sure. Oh, there we go. So this should keep it bound between 0 and 1, and I think that should make a lot of sense. Yeah, buddy. Much prettier. Oof, I like that. Okay. So this is our zoom in update. Um, delta ratio. And from this, we can calculate the actual start time. Does my transform ease have a delay? Can ease set easing to true? Ah. Should I handle the delay in here, or should I do it outside? Hmm. 
It might make more sense just to let the transform ease have a delay. <clears throat> Sure, that seems to make sense. So we'll have a delay. And we'll say if delay is less than or equal to zero, we'll automatically start easing. Always set the timer to zero. And we'll say if the delay is greater than zero, uh, delay minus equals time dot delta time. And now if delay is less than or equal to zero, uh, is easing is equal to true. And then actually our timer, we want to add the overshoot of the delay. So we're gonna negate plus equals negative delay now. So here's the end point of where the delay should stop, and the delta time pushes it 0.1 past that line just because of the way the timing worked. That would mean we automatically update our timer to be here. A tiny little thing, nothing too fancy. <clears throat> and everything else should be good. That was a little bit easier than I expected. Uh, by a default, our delay should equal zero, as no one else is using that. So our delay is the delta ratio. No. It would be start time times total. And our duration is going to be the delta ratio times total. Delta ration. <laughs> Create new transform ease. And we'll set the delay to delay. What else do we need to do? We probably also want to set up the delegates, which we'll get to eventually. Begin ease, get curve. Uh, we want to set the curve as well. And the duration. Set curve. Are these mono behaviors? Please tell me they're not. Oh, thank Jeebus. <laughs> so we set up our ease and then section dictionary dot add current dot name new ease. So here we've got this begin. Um, uh, 
Let's do a some debug code here. On begin ease plus equals a delta no lambda. Too many Greek letters. Beginning is current dot name. Is this even going to work? I wonder if the scope will work correctly. That would be wild. Nope. So these two should begin immediately, followed eventually by our outfade. Our outfade should end first, and then these two should end at the same time. Nothing. Oh, I guess I never told them to begin <laughs> or update. Womp womp. Okay. Do 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 do. So here, I'm going to comment out all of this fun stuff. And I unfortunately have to do a for each, I believe, and this is a key value pair of a string and a transform ease entry in a section dictionary. And then when we begin, we'll say entry dot value dot begin ease. And in updates, we'll get rid of you because we're we got it working simply. Come on, console. Beginning ease. Whoa. Okay, something's wrong there. Let's turn off collapse. So it looks like it's ending our outfade first. What in the heck fire? Connecting the D blogger. So initialize should, oh yeah, it should run. Okay. Out position. So the ratio is 0.5. Delay is zero. Duration is 1.5. Cool. Set in these, doom, doom. Adding. Should be out scale. Uh, same. Whoa. Oh wait, yeah. Delta ratio 0.5. Delay zero. Duration 1.5. And time 0.4. Start time 0.2. That makes sense. 0.2. Delta ratio. Delay is 0.2. Oh. Yeah, I guess 20% of three seconds is 0.6. That's correct. Yeah, okay. That looks fine to me. So those numbers played out nicely. Whoa, this is already gone. Whoa. 
Whoa! Out fade. When did I tell them to begin running? What's going on? On begin here. Update. Yeah, you know what? I think that was my logic error and my transform ease. I should just say is easing is true. And then if we're easing, yeah, I should just be able to cut this in here. That was the problem. If it's greater than zero, subtract. If it's less than or equal to zero, add the opposite. Else, return. So that makes sense. We had a 0.2 second delay and we were updating every frame. Okay, so the outfade did happen slightly before. Let's make this duration 10 seconds. And let's do this at 0.1. Hmm, arrow keys work like that. That's pretty neat. And 0.6. So it should go bump, 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 bump. Weird order, but sure, why not? Out position, out fade, out scale. Okay, and you know what? All of these three played at the same time. Yeah, that makes sense because I did it on begin ease. Let's not put that here. If delay is less than or equal to zero. Oh, geez. How are we going to do this? I was thinking we could do begin ease here. Sure. Eh, well, that is going to throw our timer off a little bit. If delay is equal to zero. Well, do it here, and then we could set delay equal to negative float dot, nope, float dot negative infinity. And that should happen here, not inside the condition. Automatically begin ease. Hold on. So I'd actually be adding delta time twice here. It's a bit of a problem. Let's go to the drawing board. So if I've got my delay, and it's counting down towards zero, and then we get to negative point 
one. Let's say that this frame, it was at 0.1, and for some reason it took 0.2 seconds to do this frame, something massive. I think I am right to add this negative point onto the timer, but I just don't want to add it twice. Delay equals zero or delay is greater than zero, else. Um, whoa! Did I not get rid of that begin? No, I did not. So I should go bump, bump. Nice. That looked like it worked perfectly. So we got these bad boys linked together. <clears throat> now it's time to start handling their updates. On update ease. And this gives us a curve ratio. Dang, this is going to be like a different function for each type, isn't it? For each friggin' thing. So what's the point of putting it all together like this? I'm not too sure. I mean, this could be target scale. You know what I mean? We might want actually So we'll change this to transition type. Yeah, the vector three float thing is just not gonna work. We could do something like um, where we had, you know, position out, scale out, fade out. Yeah, each of these are going to need to be different. <clears throat> so, and I feel like they're all going to be set as well. 
Like, why would... Why would we need to change that? Um, by set, I mean that each of these are going to have their own unique function that needs to run. Although, it doesn't matter whether it's out or in, does it? This should be angry. Um, there is no float. Equals scale or fade. This is position now. Uh, please don't get rid of everything. Oh, hey. Uh, scale. Oh, no, that's not a good idea. Um, invalid. And then if current dot transition type equals invalid, log error cannot have an invalid transition type. Wait, what did I do? Oh, hey. <laughs> Wrong constructor. So this one's actually position, main camera. This one is scale. This one is fade. Oh boy, we are fading every single mesh on here. This should work fine as long as we don't have pieces of the cube that are faded at different values. We could just assume that the glossiness on all of them is the same which assuming is bad. So, um, here's a wake. We'll add materials and then when we begin, Do a preprocessor directive here. Material index.
just want to make sure that all of them have the same value when we tell it to begin. Is this necessary? Maybe not. But we've almost already finished it, so we might as well. So I need to get the first fade material. So we're going to start this at fade materials at index zero dot get a float. I do believe I rechanged. I changed the name of this, didn't I? Fade shader. Smoothness. Oh my goodness. And we'll start this at one. So we need to log an error saying um, <laughs> cube meshes do not share the same smoothness value. This can lead to visual anomalies. Oh, nom. Eh? I don't know. Anomalies. Let's check that. Nothing more embarrassing than having a spelling error in an error. Oh, nom Ali. Nice. Hey, good times. So where where everything's the same. Uniform. Uniform smoothness values. So I think we're out of time. Now I've got seven minutes left. Ah, cool, cool. Will I get any of this working? Probably not. Uh, let's get nice with it. Whoa! So position, we'll say new ease dot on update plus equals update position. And this takes in a float ratio. <clears throat> and you 
know what? Maybe we could... And our begin position is... And this is going to do, this is our world scale transition. Dang it. It's not going to help, is it? Is it? I might need to do this all in here. Because we need access to this new ease so that we can, no, world scale transition. We need action access to the current section. Ooh, we could put this in section, couldn't we? Okay, I think it's time to make this your own class. You're big enough. You're a big enough, boy. And we'll call this transition section. And let's put this into a folder. We'll call this World Transitions. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, I think we're going to end it there, but I'd like to make a note before we skedaddle. Where did you go, world transition? No, oh, world scale transition. No, do 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 do. Transition section. This is our world scale transition. You live there. So let's grab our public member variables. Uh, public member functions. And I think that's all we need for now. I'll copy pasta the rest later if we need to have any extra other sections. Hmm. Well, we made some headway today. I know it's a late stream. I had some other stuff to take care of today. But I'm not too upset with where we got. Um, we're a lot closer. I was telling one of my neighbors the other day that when you're writing code, you have an idea. And you're like, okay, I'm going to do this idea. And it turns out you spend four hours getting ready to do the idea. <laughs> You gotta set up the infrastructure first. Make sure everything is copacetic. Is this gonna break everything? Come on, stay with me here. That's good. Section does not exist. Oh, that is a transition section. That's gonna be real, real goofy. New transition section.
Oh boy, I definitely am glad I did not end the stream without checking that stuff out. I'm sure it's angry somewhere else. Yep. And any current sections that we may be looking at. Yep. Never submit broken code. Never, never, never. Um, so nothing's working now, but at least it's compiling. And that makes me happy. So that's it for me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you next time.